Hi everyone, part three of the CB500 engine build series. This time we'll be continuing with taking the cylinder head apart. I've also made a bit of progress on the bike, so I'll show you what I've been up to. So while I've been working on the bike, I've been busy collecting all these parts. Starting from the back, I've obviously bought a new radiator and you can see Ben's modified that for me and put on a radiator cap. That means I can use something like this, which is where I'm gonna plug the COSO temperature gauge, which is this over the, on the right, plug it into there, and then I can run a pipe from the back of the engine directly into here, which obviously allows me to bypass the standard thermostat housing that sits underneath the tank. So a bit of a mod, it means it's a bit easier to obviously maintain the water level in there, and it also frees up space under the tank. I've got these nice engine cases, which are much stronger than ones I've used before. I picked up a second-hand set of shocks for the bike, so hopefully they'll be okay when I put them on. I've got a Domino quick throttle to go on the bike, and I've also bought the kill switch to match it. I've got these new AIM Racing axle adjusters, which look really nice. Can't wait to get them on the bike. So instead of using the standard coils on the bike, I'm gonna give these a try. These are off a 600 RR, and again, they'll clean up space underneath the tank. And then just a few other bits, a fuel filler, new carb rubbers, new grips, exhaust mount, and then this thing is a speedo for the bike. So this is gonna be a digital GPS speedo, and hopefully I'm gonna be able to run this on a daytime MOT. Then the summer in nice evenings, I'll be able to get out the bike for a bit of a blast. And then finally, this nice battery box and plate. So now we're on to stripping down the cylinder head. When we inspect the cylinder head, we're looking for a range of things. Most important thing, obviously, is the cam journals which is these aluminium housings here. Not something you see very often on the CBs for them to wear, but it's very common on the motocross bikes where that they get really hot and the aluminium picks up. They're obviously a precision machined housing. If the clearance is too big, oil, you don't get enough oil pressure and they pick up then basically. So these are your cam buckets with your little shim underneath. So we'll take all of them out. So that's what we'll do when we check all the uh... Check it all over afterwards. Yeah, we'll have a look at everything nice. properly. I'm just going to pull it to bits now and have a brief um, inspection because we've got to measure. We've got to measure the valve stems. So your valve stem, it's a valve guard clearance. We'll measure that. See what that's like. So I've now got to keep the valve in place and then push down on top of the on the top retainer. Yeah, which is what this this tool comes in for. I just keep going until you can just about get access to the collets, which is there now. Small magnet, and you can pull them out then. There you go, there's your done. And you can just unscrew. That will literally just lift out with the spring. And your valve will all right with that then yeah that's very car see the back of it see how, car oh, yeah. see how much carbon's on it yeah, that yeah. normally indicates that the leak the valves are leaking right you also want to look at the valve face itself because the valve face is where oh yeah yeah that wears away it's got to be a nice straight 45 degree ground finish last piece on the bottom that's basically what the spring rests on against it, yeah. Push against it, yeah. So it's, a, it's a, basically a, a valve spring shim. So now it's just a case of doing all the rest then, isn't it? Removing all the others. Yeah, take all the others out and then once, once they're all out, we'll flip everything over yeah. and we can have a look at the valve seats. Right, we've flipped it over. Now, obviously, once we've flipped it over, we're looking at the condition of the valve seats. Yeah. As you can see, all of them, you, can't, you might not be able to pick it up on the camera, but they are all pitted. The pitting is basically very small little indentations yeah. or indents in the valve face. Don't know if you're able to pick it up on this side. But as I said before, with the carbon buildup on this one, you can see on the inside of the valve seat there. So it has, it's either been leaking or it's possible that the valve spring is also worn. Right. So the, the, the valve spring is not pulling the valve back fast enough. And it, you know, so that it's closing in time for the, the combustion. The, all these seats are going to be getting recut anyway, so the, the next step realistically is to inspect all the valves. So we've just stripped the cylinder head down. Now we're going to show you how to measure the internals of the cylinder head. So what we'll do first, we'll start with the valves. What we're looking for on the valves is where on the valve stems, which is this here. 
In the last video, we shown that there's some pitting on the valve faces. We have cleaned these up in the vape blaster, so they do look nice and clean. What we're going to do, we want to measure it in three different places on the valve stems. Top, middle, and bottom. And we'll do that for all eight valves. Once you've done all of them, we can move on and show the run out of the valves. So what this does is this measures to see if the valve face is concentric to a 45 degree with the valve stem. Yeah. Now, if the valve is out of, out of round or out of true, when it comes back onto the seat, the seat won't fully seal. So basically we have the valve in the jig, this resting on the face, and all you do is you put it in and you just rotate the valve yeah. like that. And then while you're rotating the valve, you look on the dial to see if it moves. If the valve isn't concentric, then basically that will move quite considerably. Yeah, you'll see a lot of movement. Yeah, so now obviously on this one, it's quite, it's, it's okay. Yeah. So we'll literally do that for all eight valves. Yeah. So is that again, that's fine. You get a tiny, but that's nothing. If they are out, you can get them reground, but it depends on how much they're out. Yeah. So now we're going to move on to the valve spring. Basically you're measuring the free length on this, which is the complete length. Obviously over time, if it's compressed and compressed, it will shorten. So you do get a spe specification in the Haynes manual to say what this needs to be. And then you just basically just measure it with your vernier. I just, I put my hand on it, put a little bit of pressure on it, and then let it spring back to its original size. So that just keeps returning back to 2.8, so 37.28, which is fine. Now what we'll do is we'll move on to measuring the block. Measure the housings, measure the crank, measure the bores. Right, now we're gonna show you how to measure the piston to ball clearance. Um, piston to ball clearance is basically the piston the distance from the piston skirt to the bore. Um, so first things first, I'll show you how to set the gauge, right? Yeah. So I've calibrated this. You get a similar to that. It's like a set, a set in piece. Screw it in, that calibrates it, right? So cause these bores are 73 mil. So we pull out to 73 mil on here. Set it to that side. Yeah, 73 millimeters. We get the dial gauge. Now we want to basically zero the dial gauge to 73 mil. Yeah. So you put it in between the, the anvils on the micrometer, rock it forward and backwards, and if basically it finds the tightest part. I need to bring the gauge back a little bit there. All right, so that's that sorted. Happy days. So now the zero on this is set to exactly 73 mil. So when, what we do is, with the bore, we'll check, uh, we'll do cylinder two first, because that's close to the camera. Yeah. So we check the top, the middle, and the bottom. So we put it in on an angle, like that, and then rock it forward. Yeah. And basically what we're looking for is for the, the dial gauge, it'll go to a, like the tightest point, and then it'll start coming back again. So if I rock, as I rock it, it's stopping on the two, zero. You can see that. So that means that the top of this, that clearance is 73.020. That's what that clearance is at the minute. So now what we'll do is go down to the middle, check it, and then the bottom. As again, it's quite. So do you check this at three points and then try to take an average then or something? Yeah, basically that, yeah. I'll check it at three points, then take an average because I've got to measure the piston as well. You also measure this side to check for if it's out around. Yeah. So we'll measure the top. Got two zero. Measure the middle goes a little tighter, and the bottom goes tighter too. So that will need a good home to put everything back to size there. Um, so the top one was yeah 0 0.20, 0 0 0.020, middle 0.015. It's just under yeah, it's on one. Okay, zero one zero. And then on the last one, we'll do exactly the same process and um, write everything down. Yeah, okay. Now we're going to measure the piston. So with the piston, you measure the piston at about 10 millimeters down from the tip of the edge of the skirt, well, from the bottom of the skirt. Okay, so that's 72.983. Uh, yeah, I'll do this one. So 73.020 add 73.015 add 73.010 equals that, divide that by three. There's our average, so 73.015. Now what we do is we take the piston diameter away from the average 
So that's already in there. Average 73.015, 72.983 equals 0 0.032 millimeters, which is literally exactly what the um, manual recommends. I run a different clearance on the race engines. I'm not going to give that away, but that is what you'd expect to see. So now it's just a case of doing it for the other side then, is it? Yeah, just do exactly the same for the for, for the opposite cylinder. Um, and then from that, you'll know what, you know, wh wh whether you can get away with uh, the same pistons or if you need to buy new ones. Yeah. Um, but these pistons, they're well within spec. So the next step is I'm going to show you how I would select the correct bearing yeah. to get the correct oil clearance. So first things first, we're going to measure the housing here. So inside there you have a bearing shell that sits in two halves. We're going to measure it without the bearing shell, so it's the housing. So I have set the dial bore gauge, as I've shown you in the previous video, to 37 mil. Yeah. And then all I'm going to do is, obviously you've got the codes here, C, B, C, A, but you just want to check them just to make sure so you know exactly what you've got. Um, they don't tend to change often, but it is always worth just checking. So yeah, so that's 0.18, okay. On this chart, you come over to it, you've got the case housing codes, right? So we're on point one eight. So we're on the maximum side of the C. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so what we'll do there is I do all four of them, I measure all four of them. Yeah. And then on here, we can do that was number one. So we'll do C, uh, housing code C. The diameter of it was uh, 0.18, 37.018. Okay. So now we've got that, so we know that's, that's correct. Next step is we want to measure the corresponding journal to that. That's going to sit in there. 34.006. That was originally a two. So we've got 34.006 and then we can look. Respect, so 006. Yeah, it's still a two. So the range for two is 34.001 to 34.007. Right. So that is still a two. So now what I would do is do the calculation. I would do the big number minus the small number. Uh, 0.006 equals that. And then each bear and shell thickness, you'd, you'd half it again because you've got two. So divide that by two. That's basically the gap in between. So going off that now, I can choose the specific main bearing clearance that I want to use. All the different bearings, so you've got yellow, green, brown, black, and blue. I know the thicknesses of all of those because so I've measured them all. So because of that, I can select the correct bearing to give me the exact main bearing clearance that I want to use. And it's exactly the same process for the rods. What you would do is, I won't, I won't actually do that because I need to reset the bore gauge up. Clamp the two bolts together. So, it, you know, tighten it up, torque it all up so it's tight. Measure the diameter of this. Yep. Once you've done that, do the same process. Measure the diameter of the journal. Once you've done that, then that'll give you the indicate, you know, that'll give you the numbers you need to then calculate the size shell that you need. Because each each shell, yellow, green, brown, blue, black, each one of them is a different thickness. So the yellow one's the, the thinnest. So that's the thinnest diameter. The blue is the biggest one, so that's the thickest diameter. Um, and then obviously you can pick and choose. If you get these right, theoretically, what is supposed to happen is the main bit, the main journal shouldn't touch the shell at all. It should just be floating on a very thin film of oil. So it shouldn't touch. That's what happens when they're set perfect, which obviously reduces friction and reduces wear on everything else. So I think the next step after this is we're gonna get all this blasted up, get it all cleaned. And then once that's done, we're gonna bring it back in. We're going to skim the deck, port the cylinder head, cut all the valve seats, skim this um, cylinder head, and then we'll sh probably show how to calculate compression ratio and things like that with the barrette. We can measure the combustion chamber. And if anyone's got any questions that they want to ask, by all means, ask, ask away, and I'll be happy to answer them. Nice one, well, looking forward to the next, what we get into doing some of the mods. The then. next one's going to be, the, yeah, the next is going to be the most interesting, because um, obviously we're going to be on the Miller machine, Show how to cut valve seats, the process yeah, that. how to set it up, um, how to get it through, you know, obviously because you've got to get this perfectly flat to be machined. We'll just show one cut. Obviously, you're not going to tell exactly how much comes off. That's the secret. Um, can't give everything away. Can't, can't be giving everything <laughs> away, no, definitely not. So yeah, should be, uh, should be good. We'll get on to that. Nice. Just had these parts arrived from SF Parts. 
which is where I get all of my parts for the CB from. So new AS3 hoses, various different bearings and seals, domino kill switch to go with a quick throttle, a rear master cylinder rebuild kit, shark fin and various sprocket nuts and bolts. Got some parts back from being Cerakoted and as always they've turned out really nicely. I'll put a link in the description to where I get these done. As you can see I've had the calipers done, the rear master cylinder. I've actually modified the yoke and chopped off the key mount which I think looks a lot better on the bike. I've had the slider bar from the carbs painted as well and then the rear bracket at the back that holds the caliper, the rear axle sliders and that's it. I've just picked up the swing arm wheels and frame and I've got quite a bit of work now in putting all this lot back together so I've got to install all the bearings and then obviously clean them all up ready to be put back into a rolling chassis. Ben welded these paddock stand bobbins on so I'll be able to lift them up on a paddock stand now. So pretty happy how it's turning out so far, I've just got loads of work putting it back together. So next time is the fun bit, we'll go through the entire process of tuning the engine, so you won't want to miss that. See you next time. <laughs>